Um, my name is Clary Borg, and I um, have been working as a data journalist at um, the BBC's visual and data journalism team in London for the last eight months. Um, so as you can tell, that makes me fairly new to the team, um, but hopefully I'll still be able to answer all of your questions here today. Um, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about one way in which we at the BBC try to um, work with our data stories to make them a little bit more engaging to our audience, um, to try to make them, a little, to humanize them a little bit, and basically how we try to get better at telling stories with our data. Um, but before I do that, it's probably useful if I start by saying why I think this is something that we need to think about. Um, and data journalism has um, made it possible for us as journalists to tell stories and to find stories that we never could have done otherwise. Um, it's made it possible for us to present stories in completely new ways. Um, so it is absolutely a game changer. But having said that, the question is, how can we make our audiences care about something like this, right? Now, I love a massive spreadsheet, um, luckily. It's my job, so, um, and you know, you might as well. I feel like this is possibly a safe space to assume that that might be true. Um, but I think that overall, something like this is gonna have a pretty narrow audience, right? Um, <clears throat> and the question is, how can we take a story based on something like this and turn it into a story that is as appealing to as wide an audience as possible. Um, <clears throat> because I think, um, I think unfortunately, the sad truth is that people don't care very much about numbers. They don't, um, they don't really like reading about numbers. And most importantly for us as journalists, they don't remember numbers that they read very well. Um, however, what they do care about is a good story, well told. And that's something that they're gonna remember. Um, so, <clears throat> I think it's important um, when, when working with, uh, with data stories um, to think about, <clears throat> excuse me, I've lost my place a bit, um, to think about um, the fact that data should only be the starting point for the story. It shouldn't be the whole story in itself. Um, so that's why I think this is something important. Having said that, how can we go about actually, um, actually humanizing uh, stories based on data, how can we go about bringing them to life a little bit? Well, one thing that we often do at the BBC is that we try to build um, interactive calculators, we build personal calculators that um, tell a news story by showing the user exactly how he or she is affected by it, right? So they, they are built on the data itself and they create a personal experience for the user. So if I show you an example, that might show it a little bit more clearly. So we had um, a very large spreadsheet showing life expectancy stats broken down by, it was basically showing how long you could be expected to live, um, broken down by age and by country. Um, now obviously, there were lots of kind of news lines to be found in this, and we did a lot of kind of traditional articles looking at um, how, what countries have had the biggest increase in life expectancy, um, where, um, you know, where is there the biggest gap between men and women and so on and so on. Um, but what really made it stand out was this interactive calculator that the team built um, where you could put in your own, um, your age and the country that you live in and find out for your own, for that, um, find out the experience for that uh, specific person. So you could find out how many more years you could be expected to live, what proportion of those um, you could be expected to be in good health. And then finally, um, it gave you kind of a ranking of how your country compared to the rest of the world, to other countries and other regions, and let you play around with that a little bit. So it really let you kind of interact with the data, and it really gave you a personal experience of it. Um, and we've done this with lots of different topics, so um, on quite a wide range. So we've done everything from, you know, footballers' wages there at the far left, so you can see how long it would take you to earn as much as uh, Messi, very long time is the answer. Um, 
done house prices. Um, a couple of years ago, we looked at um, what, um, what social class you fell into. Um, pretty early example um, of, the, of the calculators that we've done. Um, and then another one more recent that I quite like as well is this tampon tax calculator, which basically just shows for women how much they spent on tampon tax since their period started. So a very simple idea, but it's, I think, quite a good way of illustrating a new story. <clears throat> so the reason I think this works is quite simply that we are all a little bit self-absorbed. Um, I think that we are so much more likely to be, involved, uh, to be interested in a story if we can see how it affects us directly or that it affects us directly. Um, if I, if I take, go back to the life expectancy example, um, like I said, we did both regular news articles and this calculator, and the, um, the calculator got nine times as many page views as the news articles that built on the same data. So people are much more likely to see it in the first place, but also I think once they are on the page, having that personal experience around the data um, make, will make it so much more memorable to them. Um, so how do we go about doing this? So first of all, we're quite lucky um, to have a large enough team um, so that consists not only of, of data journalists but designers and developers as well, and that's how we build our interactives. Um, and I realize that that isn't an approach that will work for, for everyone. Like if you are the only person working with, with publishing um, uh, data within your organization, you won't be able to build a fully fledged interactive. But I think the mindset still is still valid. I still think that's some, a good thing to bear in mind when you're working with data to try to think about how can I make this a little bit more human? How can I make it more personal for people? Um, maybe you can kind of pull out the um, specific scenarios in your data set um, to make, th to illustrate your point and to make things a bit more tangible to people. There's always like, an, there's always an anecdote to be found in the data set. Um, the other thing I was gonna say is that we always try to combine data and traditional reporting as much as possible. So, and as early on as possible. So if we are doing a story together with our health desk or together with our business desk, we make sure to have data journalists in from day one to, ma to make sure that we can start thinking about how we want to present the story, but also vice versa. So we make sure to have beat reporters in as early as possible so that they can bring their, their expertise of their field. Um, so it definitely goes both ways. <clears throat> so this is just, um, just one way in which um, one, one a approach that you can think about, I think, when, when trying to think about how to get better at communicating statistics in an effective and kind of uh, a memorable way for people, I'm sure that we'll get into lots more over the next, over the next hour or so. Um, I just wanted to finish with this, with this quote um, from a professor of journalism called Steve Doig, who says that the important word in data journalism is journalism and not data. So um, I think, no matter what the, if, whether it's traditional reporting or whether it's data journalism, the important thing is to have a strong narrative, whatever, that, whatever form that may take, to keep, the, to keep the audience engaged. So yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>